G'day folks, it's a magnificent spring afternoon and I'm going trout fishing with worms. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Right, we've had a lot of rain lately, as a result the water is high and dirty and when that happens there's normally an abundance of worms in the system. And that's why I'm using worms for bait today to see if I can catch a hungry trout. Wow, look at all that water. There's no way I'll be wading up this little creek today. There's a nice deep hole there, but even that's got a lot of current swirling through. I've got to cross this creek downstream to fish a couple of nice holes. I don't know whether I'll be able to. I might have to just fish here and then sort of hole hop to a couple of other known hot spots upstream. I think I'm not going to be able to wade that. That's insanely high. I've got a double split shot on here. Probably still not heavy enough, but it should help. <laughs> there's a pump just here and there's a pipe going down there. So I've just got to be a bit careful that I don't hook up to the foot valve. Right now I've been fishing this hole for about 10 minutes and haven't had a touch so I might go downstream and see if I can cross the creek and get to the holes that I want to fish. I don't like my chances. Safe to say I won't be fishing this creek today. I better get back in the car and go and try and find somewhere else. Huh. I need to be very careful where I put my feet here even though it's a cooler a cooler day I still think it feels very snaky it's very wet underfoot this is a lot swampy in here that's got to mean there's worms in the system normally this is where I step over the creek today I won't be stepping over the creek <laughs> this is the slowest backwater I've found today rephrase that this is the first decent backwater I've found today I've got to sit my line there and wait for a bite I think go angling rather than drifting just had a nibble. Here he goes. Fucking he's got that. Got him. Yes. Oh, I lost him. Did you see that? <sighs> so hard to find somewhere to fish. I finally found somewhere and I hooked a fish and lost him. I think it's critically important to find a slow backwater where the fish can get out of the current. Imagine how much energy it would take to sit against this current and constantly battle the current. When the water's this high and dirty, Backwaters like this might hold fish in them, but I think it's really important to find a really slow backwater like this. I can imagine that's getting a bite there, you know. Look at it dancing around. Sure, that's a bite. That's got to be a bite. That's not the current. That's a bite. I just felt it. Come on, come back. Got him. Oh, snagged. There was definitely a fish biting that there. I wonder if he's still on there or not. Bugger it. I hope it comes off and doesn't snap, but I think it's kind of snap. It came off and didn't snap. There was definitely a fish biting that then. Just a little bit of worm on there, I'll put it back out. That's two failed attempts so far. <laughs> Let's have a bite, there he goes. He's biting it. He's biting it. I'm not drifting worms at the moment, I'm angling with worms. Got him. I'm angling, I've had my rod leaning on that uh, leaning on that stick for a few minutes just waiting for this fish to come along gee I nearly slipped in the water then trying to wet my hands I'll have to just go with the dry hands oh, I was able to get them wet he's got that down a bit deep this fish so I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to just break the line and let him go right a lovely little brown trout of around 27 28 centimeters see you later buddy Right folks, I've given this hole another 10 minutes or so since I caught that trout and haven't had a touch. I'm going to have to try and find another pool, another backwater. Right, I just, I'm really struggling today. Conditions are just really, really tough. I'm going to go elsewhere and see if I can find another spot. I need to find some slower water. Right now, I've come to another creek that I've had a lot of success in in the past. The water's a lot clearer here. It's still quite murky for this particular waterway, but it's much clearer than the other creek. But there's just so much of it. It's so high. Here we go, here we go. Had a touch. I was just lifting it out of the water and I fish hit it. I don't know where he went. There he is. Yeah, I just saw him circle under the worms. Right. I caught a trout in here early in the season. A little rainbow. Well, when I say early in the season, back when they first allowed us to go fishing again. Well, this creek's not producing. I caught a trout here early in the season, but uh, 
none today. We're going to try an entirely new creek. Well, I've just arrived at the third creek for the day and it actually looks quite good. It doesn't look anywhere near as high and dirty as the other two creeks that I've been fishing. Got him. If you go look at that, first cast in the first hole. The very first hole I fished and the very first cast I made in it, I caught a fish. This creek looks much more sub uh, much more nicer. I was trying to find a big word but I couldn't. Subdued, but I don't think that's the word. Anyway folks, lovely little brown trout of around about 26, 27 centimetres. See you later buddy. This creek looks much more sub subdued, sub sub not as high and dirty as the other streams. And I caught a fish on the first cast. Ha! <laughs> Love it. Subdued? Sub subdued? I still can't work out what the word was that I was looking for before. Got him! Another one! Look at that, I've been here for five minutes and I've caught two in two casts. Right. Hang on, I've fair look this bloke. How did I manage that? Look, I hooked him in the ass. There he goes. I hooked him in the rectal cavity with my hook and he got off. And I bet he's glad about that. Go to the pharmacy and get yourself some anusol, mate, and then you'll feel much better in no time. Because I'm wishing I'd just come straight to this creek right from the get-go. I've had two casts and I've caught two fish. The other two streams I spent a couple of hours stuffing around for nothing, for, for one little brown. Ha! Can I get a hat-trick? Three trout in three casts. No, because I've caught a rock. It wasn't a rock. It was a rock lobster. Knock it off. There goes a little trout. Oh, it was white. Got him! Yes! <laughs> oh, this stream is on fire! Three trout in the first five minutes. This one's hooked more appropriately in the side of the mouth. See ya, buddy! Ha! Huh. Isn't it amazing? I stuffed around in those other streams for ages before and done no good. Then I just tried a different stream. There's something for you all to learn from. If the spot you're fishing isn't fishing well, try a different spot. Did you say something follow that then? That's enough. Oh, there's a bite. I saw him too. He's back. He's circling it. He's, he's there, but he doesn't want to come out into the open. There's a fish in there. Provided my shadow doesn't spook him, this cast might catch him if I'm lucky. Oh, it might be too shallow, I reckon. Nah, got him. <laughs> I saw him come out. He swiped. Oh, he got off. He got off at the last minute. He swiped it like a lure, but he, I could see he just looked a bit cautious with the water being clearer. He just looked a little bit cautious coming into the shallow water, but as soon as I put it out a bit deeper, he grabbed it. And then just as I was lifting him out of the water, he let go of it. The worm's looking a bit mangled, but I'll get another pool out of it, I reckon. Another nice looking pool. I'll try this on the downstream side of this log. Surely I'm going to catch something in here. Given the fact that they're biting like mad, and it's such a nice looking spot, got him! <laughs> it's only little. Another brown. Haven't seen a rainbow in this creek for years. When I was younger, there was a lot of rainbow trout in this creek. Look at how fat and healthy he is. Such a healthy, fat fish. Healthy, fat fingerling. See you later, mate. Having a blast!
I'm gonna try this same worm through this hole. Have a look at it. Would you? All the guts have gone out of it. It's just a, a Jan Jack worm skin, <laughs> but it's working. I reckon I've caught two or three fish on this one worm already, you know. I had a bite on me worm skin. Just a slight breeze to compete against here. There's a fish following that, I can see him. He hasn't bitten it yet, but I can see him. I reckon he's gonna. Here he goes. The line's pulling tight. Got him! <laughs> I actually saw the fish before I felt him. Come here, buddy. Lovely little brown trout. And that's why I didn't feel him, because rather than just tug on the line, he just opened his gills and went boom and engulfed my hook. Alright. I'll uh, break the line, I'll bite through the line as I do, because that's probably bad for your teeth. See you later, mate. It's funny, I cast up in there and I saw a fish swim down in the direction of my worm, and then I never felt any bite, so I took up the tension and I felt weight, so I struck. I reckon he swam up to it. Just what they do, they open their mouth and inhale all the water and all the worms. I reckon he's gone and then just sat there without realising he was hooked until I put tension on the line. I am having an absolute blast. When you get a lot of rain, the trout fishing can be red hot using worms. When there's too much water, it can be a real struggle, as you saw at the start of the video. Now with a lure, I could cast under that without too many problems, but it's a bit harder with this rig. It's harder with a split shot. Oh, did I get under? Yes. Just. There's a bite. Got him. Not a bad fish either. Right. Come on, buddy. Hey, little buddy. Thanks for coming and saying hello. See you later, mate. It was nice knowing you. You know, that fish got off, in case you didn't notice. <laughs> Now I know a few people are going to be asking themselves why isn't Robbie carrying a landing net? It's actually a question that I get asked from time to time. It just, it takes away from my keep it simple fishing mentality. I love to keep things simple. If I was fishing in a spot where I knew I might catch some monsters, well I might take a net, but I might not either. I was only going to release that fish anyway. If I really didn't want to lose that fish, it was if it was critically important to me that I landed that fish and not uh, lost it, I wouldn't have held it out of the air for 20 seconds and let it flap around and possibly get off. I would have left it in the water until the last minute until I was ready to grab it. Bit of a long pool here, I don't even see where that landed. Must be in the water because there's a fish here that got him. Oh, it feels alright too. Well, this could be the biggest fish today. Uh, now, I'll take a bit more time with this one. It's still not a big fish, but I reckon it could be the biggest today, or the biggest in this creek today. Uh -huh. Come here, slippery. There we go, folks. Lovely little brown trout. He'd be nudging 30 centimetres, this one. Hooked in the mouth. So I can get the hook out nice and easily. And then I could say, bon voyage. See ya mate. Off he goes. Didn't even see where that landed then. I just, uh, I cast up and thought, I hope that landed in the water. And then I felt a fish pulling on the other end. And I thought, yep, that landed in the water. <laughs> right, I'm just gonna lower this one into the current here. Then it's let the current drift into the pool a little bit. Gee, that bird sounds nice. What sort of bird that is? Got him. Oh, there was a fish on there then. You might have seen me now. I've got my head sticking out over the hole here a bit. I just pulled that up then and there was a bloody, there was a fish just biting on it. Got him. <laughs> Look at that, I didn't even have to reel it in, I just lifted it up. 
There's a bit of blood coming out here. Uh oh, this one might be in a bit of trouble. He swallowed it, mate. You've got a bit of blood on you. All the best, my friend. People sometimes ask me if I reckon biting the line off is the best thing to do or cutting the line off. It is. If you stuff around too long trying to get the hook out, you'll kill the fish. You're more likely to kill the fish by holding it out of the water too long than what you are by just breaking the line and letting it swim off with the hook in it. Nine times out of ten, they'll get rid of the hook. Just like when we get something stuck in our throat, we can... <coughs> our natural instinct is to cough it up. They've got their natural ways of dislodging things out of their mouth and their jaw, and sometimes they'll even pass the hook right through. I have on numerous occasions over the years caught Murray cod with hooks hanging out of their backside. Hooks that were... their stomach acids are just broken right down and they're almost out and I've just caught them at the last minute. Definitely breaking the line or cutting the line on a gut hooked fish is a much better option than leaving it out of the water too long and trying to be a bloody surgeon and remove it. And I think the, the fish would appreciate you putting it back in as quickly as possible too. Alright, there's a new hook and a new worm. I'm ready to go. I almost walked straight past this nice looking little backwater here. I was looking at all the deer footprints along the creek and looking up there and I just looked down there's a nice pool here that I almost walked straight past. Got him. Oh, he's a nice fish. Lift! <laughs> yes, this one's lip hooked. That's probably got to be the biggest trout that I've caught today. He'd be 30, nudging 30 at least, high 20s. And he's lip hooked so he gets to swim back straight away. See you later, buddy. Oh, the fish are absolutely going off their heads. In case you hadn't noticed, they are just going mad. And as you can probably guess, I'm using the Jan Juck worms. And they're working a treat. One worm per hook is all I'm using with a really small hook. In the creek I was fishing earlier this morning, I was using two worms per hook because the water was really dirty and I wanted to go for that maximum smell. But in this creek here, with the water being a bit clearer, one worm per hook is more than adequate. In fact, I think I caught the first two or three trout on the one worm. <laughs> I just saw a fish rise. It didn't look like too bad a fish either. I reckon I'll have that fish within about 20 seconds. The worm's going straight past where it just rose. Got him. Oh, I missed him. I can still see him. He's still there. He's just under the worms now. I might have been too close. No, he's, he's biting him. He's got him. He's got him. Got him. I saw him. Oh, I lost it. I saw him take the worms. How exciting. I actually watched him go and grab hold of them worms. Wow. Doubt that he'll come back, but there might be another one in here. It's a nice hole. There you go. Got him. Oh, I wonder if it's the same fish. There's not much of the worm left. What if I thread? I wonder what happens if I thread this worm on the hook. what's left of this worm on the hook. I wonder if that'll help. Right, that's right in front of him. It's right in front of him. There's a snag there, that's the problem. Well, then I'm gonna get the fish, I'm gonna get the snag. Got him. I've got the fish this time. Yeah. Oh, we've got a jumper. I've got him on about a centimeter of worm. Right, mate, come on. Oops, there he goes. Just as I was lifting him out of the water, he said goodbye. He said, I'll see you next time, Robbie. Thanks for visiting me. That was exciting. He was just sitting right there. Oh, what a sort of fish. Where'd he go? I just saw a tail swirl past me worm then. I wonder if he's still there or not. There it is. He's right beside me worm. There's a trout there. He's got it. He's got it. Got him. <laughs> Mate, I saw you take my worm then. Lip hooked, beauty. I don't like it when they gut hooked. It's not ideal. Thankfully, most of them have been lip hooked. Lovely brown. Around about the 20, 25 centimetre size. See you later, alligator. I don't even see where he went. I don't even think he knows where he went. I am having a blast here today. What I do with the worm, I just hook it on the hook two or three times and then leave a bit of a tail. Just like that. That's all I do. Now, you've seen, you've seen how to fish with worms for trout today. The nice small split shot. The stronger the current, the bigger the split shot needs to be. It's the basic rig with a split shot and a hook, a small hook and worms. 
the most important part to know with this sort of fishing is that it only works at the right time. Right now, while the grass is all really green still, we've had a lot of rain, there's quite a bit of water flowing down. This is only a small creek and this is a really healthy flow for it. This is a good time for the fish with worms because the worms are in the system. If you come up here in January, when this grass is all brown and the cicadas in the trees, you probably won't catch anything with worms. But you might do well with a grasshopper using the same technique. Although I would advise not using the split shot sinker if you're going to drift a grasshopper. So folks, after the rain, when there's a lot of water in the system, which is now right across Victoria, worms are the bomb. I just saw a trout around 30 centimetres rise. I can still see him. Ah, oh, stuff the car. No, that's about two metres in front of him. You'll see that. I'm looking at him, he hasn't moved. If I see him move over to the side, here you go, he's, he's spotted, here he is, he's grabbed it. Got him. I watched him feed. Ugh. Come on, fella. Look at that. He's a magnificent trout. I reckon he'd be the biggest one today. He's well over 30, probably 32, 33 centimetres. Definitely one of the biggest ones today, if not the biggest. I watched him feeding, I could see him there. He just swam up into the hole, which I didn't really want him to do. Just in case there's another one upstream. I don't want him to go and raise the alarm. But it's a really nice hole and I haven't fished up the top there yet. If I'm lucky I might get a second fish in this hole. On the same worm. Oh, there's a bite. Oh, I missed him. There's another fish in here. He's tap, tap, tap. He's got it, he's got it, he's playing with it. Got him. <laughs> the daily double off the same worm. This is so exciting. I'm just having so much fun today. <laughs> Some days the fishing is just red hot. Oops. He's a bit deep. Not even gonna, he's got a bit of blood which indicates that it's down a bit deep. Mate, I'll get you straight back in and uh, the cold water will stop the bleeding and then you'll heal and you'll be fine. I hope. I'm having so much fun. Alright well, folks, I'm about to head off. What started off as a really tough session turned into an absolutely red hot trout fishing session. I cracked the code and all I needed to do to crack the code was try a couple of different streams until I found one where the fishing was good. There's a tip for everybody, just keep moving around. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this action-packed trout fishing video. If you have, why not give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and then hopefully I'll see you in my next video.